Let's see if I still remember how to make one of these videos. It's kind of been a while. So I'm going to tackle today a controversial subject in the music world, except really anybody who actually studies music knows it's not really controversial. And that is the question of A equals 432. If you are not familiar with the concept of A equals 432, I highly recommend that you go watch both of Adam Neely's videos on the subject where he does a really in-depth dive on the subject. But one thing he doesn't cover is can an orchestra or a wind band tune to A equals 432? Spoiler alert, the answer is no. Um, why can't they do that? Well, for a string instrument, um, like all the string instruments of the orchestra or a guitar, and by and large, it does seem to be a lot of guitarists who are uh, really in favor of 432 as a tuning, well, all they have to do is loosen the strings a little bit to lower the tension on those strings to lower the tuning. The actual distance between the two points where the string vibrates doesn't change. Only the tension does. And therefore, the finger positions don't change at all between your tuning systems. You don't have to relearn fingerings. You don't have to rebuild the instrument. And guess what? You can do that with strings all day long. You can't do that with wind instruments of any kind. Uh, for example, what I have here is an alto recorder. This is tuned in 440. This is tuned in 415, broke pitch. Now, 432 is going to be about midway between them. First, let's take a look at the differences between the two instruments. And you'll see that the 415 is a little bit longer. You'll also notice that the 415 instrument is ungodly ugly because this was the very first thing I ever 3D printed. Now, this is the sound difference between a 440 instrument and a 415 instrument. So it's half a step lower. 432 is going to be somewhere in the middle. Can I take a recorder at 440 and lengthen it by pulling it out some and make it play a little bit in between? Well, let's see. Yes, but here's the problem. Those notes are not in tune. In order to do that, I have to proportionately lengthen the distance between every tone hole. Well, what would happen if I had a wind instrument that I can change the proportions evenly between each note? Well, you know what? Such a wind instrument exists. Let me grab it. This is, of course, a trombone. A tenor trombone in B-flat. Um, the tenor trombone, of course, uh, all trombones, except for valve trombones, are, have a slide in them that allows you to change the pitch. And this gives an infinite range of pitch possibilities. So, I could tune this instrument easily to 440. And that's what this instrument is built at. Trombones have slides in them. A second slide, actually. This is the, called the tuning slide. And I can pull this tuning slide out and thereby lengthen the instrument and make it flatter. So I can put this in a spot, let's say it's about here. The slide pulled out about an inch and a half. And we could say that this gives us a close 432. That is absolutely perfect for the fundamental harmonic series of the trombone, which is B flat. If I take the slide out, where first or second position was, well, it now has to be a little further out. And third position is a little further out. Fourth is a little further out still. By the time I get all the way out to seventh position, I'm almost off the end of the instrument. And seventh position really isn't usable anymore.
That's fine. Seventh position on this instrument only affects two notes, and that is E2 and B2. If I can avoid E2 and B2 in the music I'm writing, I can tune a tenor trombone to 432. What about the other instruments in the brass family, the ones that have vowels? Well, I can take the tuning slides and pull them out some. The smaller the instrument, the easier this is because the distances aren't as great. So a trumpet can do this fairly easily. I can pull out the main tuning slide, tune the whole instrument down to 432, but then I get to the valve tuning slides. Second valve, no problem. It's short, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. First valve tuning slide though, well that has to move some and you've got a thumb ring on it, you gotta move it back. I might be able to get away with it. The third valve tuning slide though, that's where we get into issues. It has to go out almost all the way to its end when you're playing. So if I already start with it out and then have to go out further, I run into the same problem that I have on the trombone here that my seventh position is nearly off. And so my slide's about to come off. So as long as I'm not using third valve, particularly um, a combination of one, two, and three on a three valve brass instrument, I can do it, but just barely. That gets me to woodwinds. Um, woodwinds, well, you can't. There is no possible way to tune a woodwind to 432. I have a flute here and the flute is as close as we can come. Um, it's completely straight. There's no taper in the bore and I can pull the head joint out and I can make the instrument flatter. But what's going to happen is I can make one note in tune in 432. Let's say it is C, which is just the first finger. I can make that note in tune, but as I get to B, well, that's gonna be a hair sharper. Not much, not really anything noticeable. A will be sharper still, and so on down the scale until I get to the lowest note of the instrument, which is going to be incredibly sharp for 432. Now it will be flat for 440. So how would I take this flute and make it play at 432? Well, there's not a good answer. The, the real answer is I have to make a whole new instrument. And that instrument has to be made about four to five percent bigger four to five percent longer than the existing instrument. Now, for something like a flute, it is doable, though difficult. You don't need to invest in any new tools. You just need to put the tone holes in a slightly different location. You can use the same tone holes. I can't say the same thing with my beloved bassoon because the bassoon is conical bore. I can't use the same tools. In fact, if I were to make a bassoon about four to five percent bigger, well, you would have to invest in an entire new set of tools to bore out the inside of the instrument. Every joint would have to be about four to five percent longer, and the cone, the ratio of the taper is gonna to have to change. As woodwinds get bigger, the ratio actually gets a little smaller. So the bassoon has a taper of about 0.82 degrees. If I go to a slightly uh, larger instrument, I may need to go to 0 0.8 degrees, 0 0.81 degrees barely change, but that minute of a change will affect the intonation of the instrument. All told, to build a brand new bassoon pitched at A equals 432, 
you are probably looking at an investment of a hundred to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars just for the new tooling alone and to get an instrument that is on par with what the professional bassoonist already uses and just think you've got to get two of those oh and you're gonna to have to get two oboes too and two clarinets each one of these think of as being a hundred thousand dollar investment so if you really really want to tune your orchestra or your wind band to a432 think about it in terms of money that every new woodwind instrument you have to have made First one's 150. Second one's gonna be another 20,000. So just if woodwinds in fours, I would say that you are probably looking close to $500,000 investment just for the research and development, tooling and construction. In other words, nobody has this kind of money that they're gonna put into something that at the end of the day, makes no difference. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit flat, flatter. You're gonna be able to hear it a little bit more, but the end result is a product of pseudoscience. And it's not worth it to try and tune an entire orchestra down to 432. So just, leave it where it is it's fine you can't rebuild every instrument in the wind section just because some people on the internet said that this number is prettier than this number i want to have a big shout out to all my patreon supporters who have been supporting me for the past few months I uh, couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, if you want to join Patreon, uh, there's a link down below. Um, and most of the Patreon action actually goes on over on my Discord server. Um, it's fairly active. We talk a lot about instrument building and general music nerdery. Um, great group of people over there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get a few more videos shot during my next few days off from work. And uh, until next time.